Outburst, a Todd Mills Mystery, Book 4, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher Scribble Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 1998, narrator Eric Ost. Chapter 40 The release of Christopher Lewis Kinney shocked everyone, and the news spread not only up and down the 19th floor, but through Government Center as fast as email could carry it. No one really understood why Judge Stewart Hawkins had refused to sign the complaint against Guinea. No one except Douglas Sims. Disgusted, he'd left his office as soon as he'd heard. And now Sims sat in the basement level cafeteria of Government Center, sipping his second large Coke. So what was he supposed to do? How in the hell was he supposed to handle this? He knew perfectly well what had taken place both back at that fundraiser weeks ago and again today. Well, fuck, Hawkins thought, Sims, slamming down the last bit of Coke. He sucked on the ice cubes, spit them back into the tall paper cup, and then pushing back his chair, he rose to his feet, a rush swirling through his body and a grin crossing his face. There was no way in hell he was going back to work today. Nope. And there was no way he was going back tomorrow or the day after. Letting Christopher Kinney go free today was a mistake that couldn't be made. Wearing a cheap blue suit, he rode the escalator up one floor, then left the building. The summer air was thick, turgid even, and the temperature was climbing high. The humidity pumping up, covering Minnesota as if with a tropical blanket. Sims glanced into the sky, saw enormous clouds billowing up into the heavens. There was a wind, sultry yet strong, and Sims knew the heat would soon break. It always did. His heart pounding. Had it really come to this? Sims jogged across Fifth Avenue and ducked into the parking ramp. He climbed the stairs three levels and, huffing and sweating, made his way up the sloping concrete floor toward his car. A small white sedan, taking out his keys, he unlocked the door, took off his suit coat, and tossed it in the back seat, then climbed in. A dense, suffocating cloud of heat embraced him. He gasped. Was he really going to do this? Really going to quit? Damn right. He'd wanted nothing more than to be Hawkins' campaign manager, and he'd have been perfect, but... There was no way in hell he wanted anything more to do with Judge Stuart Harkins. Not now. Not after today. Douglas Sims wrapped up its car. He'd been ready to blackmail Hawkins per se. Make me your campaign manager or I might be inclined to blab that you're a young girlfriend. But not anymore. Allowing a murder suspect to simply walk out of here was too gross an injunction. No, there was no way in hell he was going down any kind of political path with Stuart Hawkins. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold. To offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew, reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time, being true to their values.